Hi guys, Squall here and welcome to another Transport Fever 2 episode. Really enjoying the series. I'm enjoying making it and I can tell you guys are really enjoying watching it. We're just uh, at Twickenham Quarry and this is about to level up. As you can see here, the demand is sufficiently high. This was the Quarry Combat uh, run that we set up and I said to you we'd come back and have a quick review. Uh, so that's what we're going to do. Now, a quick summary. Uh, obviously, this is a playthrough on hard mode. The goal is to get to $1 billion dollars. As you can see, we're already on 409, so we're just going to start slowing things down shortly because uh, I don't want to progress too quickly. We've got a lot of expansion to get on with. Uh, we don't want to bust that 1 billion, but I did also say that we'd connect all of the cities together as well, so we've still got quite a lot of work to do on that front. So don't worry, this series is not going to end You know, as soon as we get to a billion. I did say we'd connect all the cities as well. If you've missed any episodes, don't forget, subscribe to make sure and go back and have a look at the playlist. And if you want to play through, uh, yourself have a go at this map and the mods that we're using uh, it's all in the video description the links there uh, also massive shout out to uh, the guys that have joined the youtube membership program i can see there's a good number of you already if i get some more we might even get some more emojis uh, and also say hi to you if you've managed to join the discord server i can see you're piling in as well so it's good to see that so massive thank you uh, we're going to carry on today by starting off having a look at the uh, conmat line just to see what is going on Obviously, that stone quarry there, which has just leveled up, is also going to, going to start chucking out a lot more demand. Uh, sorry, a lot more supply uh, of, of stone. We need to make sure we're moving that away. But already, we can see a problem here. Uh, hide conmats just can't take the load, can it? Uh, if we have a quick look at hide and see what the demand is, we can see that there's plenty of demand there. So really, it's a matter of uh, getting some more trucks on this line here. Uh, this is the one that's struggling the most. They're both struggling, but Hyde Conmat in particular is struggling. If you go to manage vehicles and just always double check that you've got you know the best that you can get, because sometimes you may come back and look at it, and there's a huge upgrade to a truck that you've missed. Uh, so we're, we're going to have a quick look at that. Sarah C Type C with side stakes. I've got a feeling, you know, it's not going to make any difference. We can't really um, upgrade that. But if you just click on one and do replace, and then just see. Uh, yeah, with side stakes. There's nothing else yet. At some point, we'll get much improved to diesel vehicles. Um, we may, you know, we will get into articulated vehicles at some point. We'll just instantly double that. I've got a feeling they're going to need. Well, that puts 12 on the line. I think they'll need more personally, especially with that quarry scenario. So we'll add another four vehicles as well, and then we'll just double click that. Click on the line, manage the line. I just want to check what they're doing. So at Lower Twickenham, they are going to wait for a full load three minutes because they're waiting for a train connection to come through. Uh, they've got a reasonable queue as well, so that shouldn't be an issue. So let's focus on the Twickenham combat and see what they've got. Obviously, this has got about the same distance to go as Hyde. Uh, so, you know, the number of vehicles is a factor. You can't put too many vehicles on a line if the distance is small because... Uh, they'll just get in each other's way and they'll just sit here and queue. And you, There's only so many trucks that you can put on a line, but we've got a good distance there. Let's have a look at Twickenham. Its demand is pretty good, but its supply is pretty good. Um, it's getting more or less what it needs. Lower oh, Twickenham, let's have a look at that. So I don't think we need quite as many vehicles in this one. We've got 12 at the moment. I suggest we'll double it. So we've got six at the moment. We'll double it to 12. I think that should take care of it, but we'll come back and have a look in a minute. Meanwhile, we've now got a much bigger problem because Henley Stone Quarry has just decided to level up, which means <laughs> we're going to need to shift a lot more conmat. Now, don't forget, this line is actually split into two. Uh, we actually have a line that takes the stone and then a line that brings the construction materials back. So, you know, we can't really scale one without scaling the other. Uh, right now, we're losing stone, so we need to address that problem. So we'll have a look at what we've got. We have three vehicles. We have the Nohab and we have eight cars. We just have a quick look at that. That gives us 117 capacity, which has got, for a flat surface, reasonable performance. But I think we can probably, the way to go on this one uh, is to increase the capacity of the, of the trains. So maybe bring them up to the full 240 meter platform length. Uh, the Nohab should be able to handle that. That'll get more bang for buck out of the existing trains and then what we can probably do is maybe add one one train possibly and see how it goes we'll just have four of them running we may be able to get away with more but it's better to take a softly softly approach and just 
uh, ease into it rather than just go and, you know, full ham and spending lots of money on uh, on cars and things like that. So let's, we need to, well, we've got the gondola. Yeah, we've got the gondola. So if we, um, sorry, I'll probably just skip some stuff. What I've done is I've highlighted all these things, then clicked on the edit selected vehicle. And then it shows the vehicles that we've highlighted here. And we can add more wagons on the back if you want to. So if we go to gondola, and what we'll do is we'll build that one up until it's got almost a 240 meter. That's the most we can get away with. Because if you add another one, it'll go over 247. Uh, meter limit so what we can do is remove one of those vehicles so we've still got two three three and then we'll basically do the same on this one like that and then the same on that one like that i have showed you this in previous previous episodes but it doesn't hurt just to quickly go over it so that will cost us 17 million just to just to add those extra cars and of course they won't be colored properly so we'll just recolor them like that and then what we'll do is we'll select one of them and just clone it so now we'll have four on that line that should give us, I mean, that's quite a long journey, so we should be able to get away with four there. Uh, but let's just double check how long they're going to wait when they get in here. Uh, so it's Henley Stone, I think it was that line, wasn't it? Yeah, that's the one. So if we go to Manage Line, and when it gets to Twickenham, it is load if available. So it's not going to hang around, and I don't think it'll need to hang around. But we'll see how that goes. I mean, you can already see now this train is just taking a massive bite um, <laughs> out of the stone there. <laughs> So this quarry is going to be more than happy with that. Um, however, looking at this, we're transporting most of it away, but there's still not a massive demand for it just yet. And the demand, of course, is driven by the factory down here, which is this one. And we're transporting most of what it's producing, but again, the demand is not massively high. So ideally, what we want to do is add a bit more demand to this. Uh, we've got some planes. Oh, I had some comments about the planes. Some people said, oh, are you going to do planes? Yes, of course we're going to do planes. Uh, we will definitely get around to that. We've just dropped the boats in. We will do planes later on, but probably not for at least two or three episodes. I don't, I don't anticipate. What I want to do is add more demand to this factory. And we already said that when demand was ready, we would bring in Henley on Thames here. Um, so what we'll do is we'll, we'll drop a train line in here uh, just to create the demand review things and then we shall go over here and have a look at this scenario what i said to you about the food here so when we come back we'll just put it back on normal speed otherwise things are going to run away with us uh, we had the food run that i was going to talk about there well we'll talk about that in a minute i just want to solve this problem first so we'll go down to henley on thames and we'll see what it needs it needs construction material uh bring in here so the question is where does it need to go and this is something else i want to discuss because some of you have said, oh, this this is triggering my OCD. The condition of vehicles is very poor. I want to have a discussion about emissions, but I don't know if we're going to get to it in this episode. Um, it is a valid point about the condition of vehicles, but it's not as significant as you might think. And there are ways that we can tackle it. But we'll cover that in a different episode, I think. So first of all, I want to just click on the cargo layer and see where the commercial sector is, which is here. So Conrad, quite luckily is on the northeastern side as we look at it. So we can quite easily get away with bringing a train into here and dropping the stuff off in the northeastern corner. Now, as you very well probably have worked out by now, I like putting my train stations next to bus and truck stations. Uh, so if we're going to put a train station in here, the first thing I'm thinking about is passengers. Where would we likely take passengers? Now, the bottom sector here has no cities at all. Uh, in fact, there, the cities that exist are over in Bradford to the east. Well, it's not, you know, difficult to go that way with the train. Or we can come up to Luggershall at some point, or even possibly north up to Twickenham. Either way, a train station somewhere outside of town here, you know, would make a lot of sense because we can go passenger-wise later. So I'm quite happy about that. We can we can have a a truck and a bus depot somewhere here. Maybe not, you know, too close. But what I also want to do is just flatten this town, flatten the town. I want to flatten the land uh, around here. We'll, we'll take this as a level because it's all looking a little bit, you know, not very pleasant, is it, for a construction project. So won't take too much money to, uh, to do this. And I think it'll just help us in the long run to build this stuff. So we'll do that. And then, of course, we'll just smooth it out a little bit. 
Lovely. So we've got a lovely playing field over here. So we get our building up and we'll go cargo station initially. Uh, we can always add PAX platforms later. Uh, when you do restart the game, it, the game annoyingly doesn't remember your defaults. I have said this before. So always check the settings on the right before you start building. 240 meters. We may as well put in a high speed track now because this will have a PAX at some point. Uh, so you know we're nowhere near ready for it, but we've got the money. We might as well start using it now. Otherwise, we'll only have to come around later and upgrade. I'm going to push it right out of town because this will swell out like this. Uh, so we don't want to be too near. So we want to be probably out here somewhere. I want to check the direction we're going. That looks all good. Uh, yeah, I reckon possibly about there-ish. Decent distance out of town. And then we'll come in. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the um, passenger stations now, the buildings for it just so I can get the road connections in and then we don't have to deal with it later. Uh, so we'll just have a look at that and think, well, you know, we could probably do a bit better than that. So we'll just we'll just delete those cargo ones. And maybe if we have, you know, in our, with our styling head on, maybe we can have some like a cargo uh, side over here like that. We can have like a couple of big buildings, uh, a medium, and then a couple of these things. Just It's just decoration at the end of the day doesn't mean anything and then on the passenger side we could perhaps put that over here um maybe style it like a like this you know just a couple of big ones a couple of medium-sized ones do it that way uh we we won't need to put the passenger platforms in just yet because well we're not going to need them for a while however the more i think about it the more i think um it would be better to have packs on the inside run and let the cargo drop in on the outside there maybe i don't know maybe so we'll just use one platform for now we may have to rejig things later we'll get our road in so we're going to go for a a nice big large country road with a bus lane and we should be able to just kind of drag it past like this and get it all to connect like so which is rather why i'd rather do it now and get all the buildings in so we can link them all up it's just easier if you do it all now uh, just when you're getting going so we probably, well, we know we're going to drop stuff in this side. Um, might be an idea just to have this road kind of loop back this way. Um, so just looking at this, what I'll probably do is we'll curve that back like this. And then maybe we could allow it to be town buildable from this point onwards. And we'll kind of bring it back into here. But what I'll do is just I'll just upgrade that road first. Uh, actually, I don't want to upgrade the whole thing. So we'll just disconnect that and then we'll upgrade that bit. And then we'll just reconnect that with a little country road without a bus lane. There we go. That'll do. Then we'll have the six lane town again. Sorry, six lane town. Yeah, four lane town. That's what we're using. The four lane town, we'll bring that in like that. So that, you know, the city can build on here if it wants to. It won't. It won't do that for a while. It'll expand outwards. Uh, but it's there, ready for it later. This road we could, of course, delete because it's irrelevant. It's only industrial. And then on the top side of town, we have got a road connecting to industry. So this, we should be able to just disconnect this completely. And it won't complain. There, there you go. So we'll just we'll just trash that because at some point we may want to put a train line going out through here. Uh, we can always reconnect this later if we want to use that industry. And then we'll have this road kind of not be a city road and we'll have it turn around with a bus lane and bring it like that and then maybe we'll make it into a town like so and then we'll just upgrade that bit oh hang on one building removed four move okay that's a, that's a pretty good bet just one building gets trashed i can live with that uh, i've obviously got a bit of a hill going on there <laughs> which i think we'll leave just because it looks kind of cool Looks interesting rather than everything, you know, everybody just lives in a flat world. It's a bit boring. Um, so initially we want a cargo station. So we're going to go zero platforms left, two on the right, 30 meters. Uh, we will put this opposite the, the cargo section. And then we'll have this one over here opposite uh, the passenger section there, like that. Drop them in roughly so that we can come in. Delete this and we'll just extend the cargo platform. It should just be a pickup point, but it will have to buffer stuff, so we we'll, may as well put it in now. 
Now we'll put two entrances in, one exit going out. You've probably seen this before already. This is how I tend to roll on these things. And then we just want a one-way road uh, that comes in off here like that. And then we can perhaps have another one just come in like that. Just to give them two independently large queues. And then this one will drop straight back. And then we'll reconfigure this one. Get rid of that. We want packs. Nice long packs platforms. Plenty of room going that way. Street access again. Two inputs, one output. I find works pretty well. And then that. And we'll bring them in here and also bring them... Well, we could, we could branch off this. That's another way of doing it. Or we can bring its own. It, it's up to you. It's just a styling thing. It does pay dividends to put a waypoint on the outer one, though. Uh, just because, you know, when you're routing, you may have to um, specifically route it down one track instead of another. Uh, and that should more or less do us. We've then got, you know, what we need to, to make this happen. The last thing, of course, we need is the drop-off point. So we'll need to figure that out. So if we go to our cargo drop, uh, we can see that if we're bringing combat in, probably about here would be the best place. So we go for a building, little truck unload stop, and we'll just put it in somewhere here. I would expect this sector to build this way, so having it here somewhere is probably a good bet. And then the last thing to do is create the lines. So that's just new line. It's going to be a truck, and it's going to be a Henley Conmat, like that. But this is obviously the truck version of it. And then we'll just color it sort of a lightish red, maybe. And we'll go from this truck stop to here. And you can see it's going to just do a loop. That's fine. Last thing we need to make this happen is a road depot, which we'll just stick out of town somewhere. Maybe on this edge of this country road. Just keep it out of the way, uh, really. It's all we need. And then we'll stick like one truck on it just to establish the line. We're going to be taking con mats. So we need to make sure that we don't use the all cargo truck. We're going to use the one that specializes in construction material. So we'll just buy one of them, color it in sort of a light red color, and then we shall pen the con maps, that one, drop that in, and he'll go out and he'll more or less just go over here and do nothing, uh, but we'll tell him to wait until full for three minutes because we've got a train line to establish. Right, so next thing is to get the train line into here. Uh, if we have a look at this setup, press L, and we're already using these two platforms. These two, we, if you remember, we planned ahead. Always plan ahead. And we kept those platforms for further conmat output, which is exactly what we're about to do. So my, the next question I have to myself is, can I reuse this train depot? Like, can I get trains to come over here as well? And the answer is, well, yes, you can. You can just, we can just rejig this line to come cut across and drop things onto this section of track if we want to. Perfectly okay thing to do. So we'll take the track uh well we use a standard track even though we've got high speed over here just need to figure the line in to here so we'll trash that because we don't need to have that in the way if we need to use this later we'll we'll build a separate thing i'm looking at that we want to keep it as straight in as possible and then take a turn here uh, we don't want to make it like too sharp because it will it will slow us down if we try and you know turn it too much but I'm thinking we can probably get it to come here somewhere. So I'm going to build out first. I'm going to use the inside line. Uh, we're going to build out like this. And then we'll start taking a turn uh, like this. Where's the cutoff point? Okay. Actually, you know what? I'm going to use high speed track. And the reason I'm going to use high speed track is just so I can see what the speed limits are on the track. So if we go for this and do it. This has got a much higher speed, and therefore if we curve in, we can see the loss of... Actually, there's hardly any loss at all, is it? Fine. Fine, ignore me. <laughs> we'll leave it as high-speed track for now. We've got the cash. Okay, so we're going to just turn it like that. It doesn't lose any speed. It's still doing a full max 300, which is what a high-speed line can do. And then that needs to go all the way over to here. And depending on where we want to bring it in, do we want to bring it in about here? I suspect we do. 
So we'll say OK to that. And then we'll start to bring this one out. And you can see it's keeping it, it's keeping it quite flat. Just make sure it follows the... Uh, I don't know if you saw what happened then, but sometimes you see this. Sometimes when the when the track undulates too much, the game gets a little confused and it doesn't join the tracks together, uh, which is what happens here. So if we just go further back on it, it should it should always be tight against the previous line like that. So just build it and then carry on. Sometimes when the line gets a bit too long and undulates too much, it kind of gets itself separated. Um, as has happened before in a previous episode. Right, let's do that. Bring in the, the diamond interchange. And notice this has got the old track. Uh, so if you want to upgrade that, you need to go to Tools and then click on the tab there and you can just upgrade that track like that. And you can upgrade any of this. When you do upgrade track uh, later, don't forget you have to upgrade these little intersections separately as well. That's just one to watch out for. It's a little gotcha for you. Right, and then what we're going to do is put this in here, just so they can go into any platform as needed. Uh, it's not going to it's not going to play ball with that one. Wasn't the right length. There we go. I wish I wish this diamond was just a set piece. I could just click diamond, click, and it would just put it in. That would be so nice if they did that. Um, right, so the last thing to do is think about bringing this, um, having a way of these lines to sort of cross over, if you like, so we can get vehicles from here to here. But given the distance we've got, I'm just thinking we'll put its own depot in at this point. I don't, I, you know, we can force the issue, but for the price of just another depot, I think I'm just going to do that. And what we'll do is we'll drop it in right next to this industrial bit. We'll just stick it here like that, and we'll just have it feed a single feed straight in like that and then we're just gonna put the signals so we'll do the signals and we shall go to just outside the diamond if we hover over here and then we set that to auto sig 400 meters usually works nicely we'll click that and you'll notice straight away it's defaulted my one-way signals back to bi-directional signals because i restarted the game and it never remembers my settings so yeah, lesson learned again. <laughs> drop that in. There we go. We drop that in. So that's going to do it just before the join. So we'll put one more there, and then we'll do one after the join here. And that should take us all the way to here. And then we find the last signal. And then we put the same thing going back the other way. That gives us a nice matched pair all the way along. But it always stops when it gets to, to junctions. Um, it never goes past junctions, so it should carry on this way. But now they're, they're separated slightly, but it's fine. Put one just before the, the diamond, and that should do us. Right. What, what's this place called? Henley. So we've got Henley Conmat. Right. So we'll do new line, and we've got another Henley Conmat 2. And this is Henley Conmat 1. And we don't want to color it a shade of red, and it will just give it like an orangey color instead, just so it stands out better. We want to go from here to here. Uh, Henley turns west, which is that one. Henley on Thames will have it just wait, but not for very long. When it gets down here, we'll have to wait for 60 seconds. Check the platforms, just make sure you're happy with them. And we can basically create the train to do that. Now, this um, train that we have right now, we just go to manage vehicle. We didn't add the extra cars onto this that we added on the other one, and we may well have to do that. But what we'll do, just for this new line, we'll create a no-hab um, one of those things, and we'll stick a full-length uh, flat car side skate. We'll just go to 240 meters straight away. I've cooked it. Like that, we'll just have 240 meters out the door. Give it the dark orange color, Henry Combat 2, off it goes. We'll let that single train run that line until we can add another one. Uh, we've already got the trucks there, so the lines should already be established. And now that we've just dropped that in, it should start to recognize this as a consumer. There you go. So that's going to uh, 
Twickenham, Hyde and Henley on Thames. There you go. Twickenham, Hyde. So Henley on Thames is just coming online as a, a demand. It's not a huge demand. It's quite a small demand. Um, but it will start to put stuff onto the platform uh, for Henley shortly. And that demand should start to climb here. And when the demand, of course, hits this up arrow, uh, it will level up. And once it levels up, it will want more stone. So the whole thing starts to uh, feed back on itself. Let's just double check if we got on top of the situation down here. It looks like we, we absolutely did. The demand of this is still a little bit low. Um, we probably need to add more trains onto that return journey. Because uh, I don't think 117 is going to be enough. I think we need to be moving more. Yeah, Henley Combat 1 still has stuff lying around. I don't think we need more trains, but I think they could benefit from the longer trains. So what we'll do is we'll do the same thing that we did um, to the stone train. We'll add more cars on the back, but we won't add an extra train. I think we'll just uh, bring this up to full length. So we'll find the flat car. And that adds an extra three cars on the back to bring it up to the full maximum allow length given our current platform and that should do that right we'll have to keep our eye on things but what i want to do now is jump over and have a look at the grain and alcohol situation that we set up in the last episode okay if you remember our food network was based on this distillery here and these ships here so this ship this ship here is bringing a lot of grain this was turning the grain into alcohol and then the alcohol is being trained all the way down here to this food processing plant where it's turning alcohol back into food. Lovely. That's been working okay. However, obviously, we only just finished setting it up at the end of the last episode. And what I did was I quickly jumped back in and had a look. And you may have already spotted my new error, uh, which was that this truck station here was connected to the train station and the bus station all connected. But it's not connected to this yeah if you click on this it's not connected to that which means when the alcohol uh was coming into here it will be dropped at this train station which is connected to the alcohol food processing plant however since the food processing plant is not connected to the truck station the food could not get dropped here so it could never make it into town that was a new error because Although when you click on the train station, everything's connected. When you click on the truck station, it has it's too far away from this plant. It can't go, it can't hop via the train station. Um, arguably, it should, but it doesn't. So this is too far away. So what I had to do was build another one over here. So we can now just get rid of this. This is no longer needed. You know, we may as well just let the... Uh, let the town build on there if it wants to and just have the bus station. So we've got this. So I moved it over here and we've got this little food line going. Elsham food. And food is flowing, but if you look at it, you know, demand is not amazing, is it? Like it's, mm, it's got plenty of whiskey, but the demand is just not fantastic. What we need to do is level this thing up. How do we do that? We create more demand. We already talked about this. We talked about taking food from here south towards Princess Rispera. Now, when you last saw this town, there was a windy country road coming down to here, and none of that was here. What I did just before the video was I got rid of this country road, and I just dropped in a lovely fast road coming in to this side of Princess Risborough. I then added a few bus stops and created a little bus route, because what we're trying to do is develop Princess Risborough. Uh, so we've got some public transport going now. It's hubbed via this bus stop. Obviously, this bus stop, nobody wants to go there. Uh, so this entire section of the journey is pointless right now. I could just get rid of that stop completely. In fact, you know, I might as well just in the in, in the in the interest of service frequency, there is not much point stopping at Princess Whisperer Branch right now. We may as well just delete that and let the buses just loop around. Later on, we can bring them here. We can put a train station there, and we can whisk them off to Aylesham. That's the plan. Again, long-term thinking is to put a train station here. But what we can do is we can now take food from Aylesham and we can drop it straight into Prestance Risborough. We could drop it off here, but it's pointless now 
Later on, if we need to move more of it, we could train it in and then truck that into the city. But for now, we'll just go direct. We've got a lovely fast road. If you look at where the drops are, uh, food is actually needed in the commercial sector of town, which is like here. So if we think that our trucks are going to come down that road, what they probably want to do is just, you know, maybe go to about there. So we'll add a uh, truck unload point. Anywhere here should do it. Let's put it like there. And then what we'll do is we shall create a new line uh, called Ailsham to Princess Food. And we'll color it whatever color we like. We'll color it pinkish color, or purplish color, whatever that is to you. And it wants to come from here. And we want to make sure it comes from the other platform, which it does. It's, it's, all, it's defaulted it correctly. It's going to come down here and it's going to drop directly there. And that looks pretty good. It's going to loop straight back. Fantastic. We'll then create some trucks. So we'll buy cargo. And we want uh, food, so we're going to have to take... Well, that's grain, that's no good. We have to take all cargo, because the equivalent on a train is a boxcar, but there's no such thing at the moment on, on the trucks. So we've either got all cargo, or effectively loose stuff, or fixed materials, but food doesn't come in to the back into this uh, truck, so we're going to have to go with the all cargo option. Uh, we'll stick, maybe... It's quite a long journey. They only do 60Ks, these things. So we'll maybe put, like, 8 on there, something like that. That should do it. And we did it, I think, that color. There we go. And then now we've put trucks on the line, we'll just double check uh, what the consumption is. There we go. Princess Risper is now a consumer, which hopefully will bring that up. And then it'll level up. And then our trains will make more money. Because right now, if we look at these trains, uh, obviously they're coming back empty. They're, they're just about breaking even. I just added some more cars on the back. Uh, so they should start to take a bit more stuff now. There you go, 80 of 91. So they, they should start to make some money shortly. Um, but the main thing is, you know, is this getting the stuff it needs? Well, it has grain in store. And there's a ship on the way. So hopefully that will get there before it runs out. I've added a few more onto this line here. But as you can see, you know, this has got to the point of being a problem. We've got two ships coming in now. They will wait to full, so I suspect what will happen now is that will wait till full, and then the second one will will just sit there for a while. Um, this is not quite ready to bring on the second grain um, because we're not moving everything, and it's not shipping everything, as you can see here. Uh, it still has more capacity, so we don't bring that in just yet, but when that starts to get exceeded, we'll need to bring this one online. So again, just bear that in mind, that you've got to keep on top of supply and demand um bradford we'll just ignore that for a second so just coming back to ailsham i've added a set of bus stops in there as well so we've just got a little bus circuit going on uh although we're stopping at the bus stop here there's not much point but i'll let them carry on because that's a natural loop there uh that should now develop ailsham here so they're now growing in resident terms they're getting plenty of food i'm hoping this is going to level up there we go bang that's what we wanted so once that levels up, it's going to improve that line massively. I suspect this grain factory here won't cope anymore. Um, the main thing is we're now growing Princess Risper as well, or we will be when food arrives there. And we've now taken over some of the private transport as public transport. Fantastic. Jump back over here a second and see what's going on. See if our train is actually performing. Where is he? There he is. Right, what are you up to, pal? All right, not much on the back there. I suspect you're losing money hand over fist right now. Yes, you are. Uh, 39 con mats. Let's have a look at what's going on. So that has definitely leveled up. It has a good supply of stone, so that's not an issue. It's only allocating it 60 or so. I think what's going on, this is just a demand problem at the moment. Uh, Henley on Thames is still very, relatively small. Um, and it needs to have... Probably more than one truck on it, uh, just to get the delivery sorted out. So we'll give it an extra two trucks to cope with that. And what we need now is a nice bus route for this thing, because it has nothing in the way of public transport. We want to grow it. We'll have a look at its connections in a second, just to see um, what it's got going for itself. What we'll do is we'll make that a... 
bigger road there. So make that because this this isn't going to get used really. It shouldn't really be that kind of road. In fact, we'll just bring it back down to a normal road like that. Um, because this is an industrial connection. In terms of connections to other towns, it looks like Henley is a bit isolated. Uh, in many respects, Henley's got nothing going for it, has it? Look, very few public transport, private transport options going on because it's not just the way the map is. Some cities don't really connect. Like this one already had a connection. Uh, Lugashall possibly has some private transport going on. Sorry, not that one. Uh, we want that one. No, it doesn't. It's disconnected as well. The, the residents here are very much living in the past. They're isolated. There's a the potential there to create a shipping passenger run between Lugashall and Mitchell Dean, and possibly even a bus run between these two, but I don't know. I think I'd like to get Lugashall a bit bigger. Uh, obviously, Henley's growing now. Hmm. It's a problem. It's definitely a problem. You know, it, it's possibly a candidate for aviation, but I don't like aviation with such small towns because they very rarely pay for themselves. Um, while we're thinking about that, we'll come quickly in with some uh, bus stops here and we'll drop some stuff in. We'll have one here. We'll have, let's see, one over this district here. We'll have one on the way in. So they can come around a loop like that. And then just for now, we'll have one over here. And that should do all four. So we'll create a bus line. Henley buses. We'll color it green. Why not green? Uh, we won't bring in that station just yet, because if we do, it'll just put a massive delay on the whole thing. Um, but what we'll do is... Oh, there's no way back to that. We might have to reroute the road one second. I don't want it doing a strange double back thing. Why are you not clicking? Why are you not clicking, game? There we go. Uh, what I'll do is I'll just add a a piece of road just between here and here. Like that. We'll upgrade it. There we go. Just so that it's got a natural loop. Because normally it would be going via the station as a loop, but we'll just create a natural loop like that. We'll bring a few PAX buses in. We don't need many. This is a... It's a small town, but we'll give them like five. Colour them green like a Flix bus. And we'll stick them in like that. Right. That will help grow Henley a little bit. Not a lot. It's, it's a bit isolated, this one. But if we can feed it some stuff that it needs, it will start to attract residents. Uh, and those residents will want to travel to other places. So Henley should be on the up and up soon, but it's going to take a little while. Meanwhile, I'm really hoping to see this level up. Uh, we've got a ton of combat here. What's going on? Only combat one. We've got three trains on there. Balances on that combat line are looking pretty tasty. I'm happy about that. So that's good. So all the materials are coming back this way. Uh, that is not maxed out yet still. Finance is that looking pretty decent. How are they for the whole line? Yep, the whole line's making good money. We have a lot of materials still lying around here. Twickenham seems to be the one. Maybe they could do with four more vehicles. Remember I added... There we go. Let's give them 16. Okay, that's fine. How are they getting what they need? 189 out of 246. There's still more demand here. Let's just double check where the stop is um, because sometimes the city can grow out of proportion. Yeah, okay, yeah. So you can see uh, this may or may not be a problem. Let's have a look. So the truck stop is currently here. I can already see traffic issues, actually. Yeah, so that's another reason why the deliveries aren't getting through. You see, what's happening is uh, the truck is stopping to unload, and that's holding up everybody. So that's a prime candidate to be upgraded uh, on that section of road. However, however, we already just saw that it's not the right stop anymore. Uh, Drop-in here is missing out on some 
con map down the bottom there. And as the town grows this way, because we're supplying it with con map, it's kind of entirely in the wrong place. Um, so what we want to do is have it on a nice road with a bus lane in it so that it's not hindering other traffic and get it off that main line. So I'm thinking... I'm thinking it's going to grow here. So maybe, maybe there-ish might do. But that's too close to the bus stop, so that's not going to work. I think that will replace that if we do it. We could bus, we could punt the bus stop a bit further down here. We'll reconfigure that line. So instead of stopping... Where are you stopping right now? Broadway. Henley Buses. Broadway. What's this one? Windsor Road. Currently stopping at Victoria Road. So instead of stopping at four... So after Springfield, stop here and then get rid of Victoria Road. There we go. So we just reconfigured that slightly. Then we'll get rid of this bus stop. That will then allow us to add a truck stop here. And then painfully... Oh, misclicked. And then painfully what's going to happen is we're going to lose some stuff when we do this. But five buildings removed. It's going to cost 2.3 million, but it's totally worth it. And the reason it's worth it is because... The city is growing and we don't want to be hindering traffic. Uh, it really does help if you get all the all of your bus lanes ideally, and tram lanes as well, ideally need to have bus lanes because they will get stuck in, uh, in public traffic if you don't. In private traffic, sorry, if you don't. This whole road here really should have it, like the connection between here and here. But what we'll do for now is we'll change the con mat drop so instead of being at New Street, we're going to put it there, and we'll get rid of New Street. So now it will loop this way, which means it takes up that road there, but it's not ideal. What I would do is I would basically make this road like that. I would just take the hit. We, loop, we lost a bunch of people. They'll come back. But what we've now got is our trucks are able to go on the bus lanes in and out quickly, just in and out. And that's what you want. So we'll now delete this truck stop. They'll have a more efficient um, drop point. If you actually look at the demand for this now, this number is dictated effectively by, well, the amount of capture you can get out of this stop. And now we've just moved it, we'll get a little bit more capture out of it. So that will just increase the demand. That's Twickenham Sword. Let's have a quick look at what's going on in Hyde. So our current stop is here. If we have a look at the cargo, again, you can see, you know, that the town has kind of grown out in this direction. As the Conmat supply increases, the, the town will grow this way. Um, it's not probably a problem if I hover over that. Yeah, it's got good capture, so that's not really an issue for this one. And obviously it comes in on a bus lane road anyway. The question is, where does it go after it finishes? And the answer is... Actually, no, the bus lane indeed stops. So it's, it, it is holding up traffic. Uh, so we just need to take the hit on that. And just get traffic flowing again. That's good. And what I might do is, while we're at it, make some painful uh, upgrades. And that will just allow traffic to move around a bit more freely. Uh, once it figures it out in a second. But, so the trucks will come down the bus lane like this. They won't be hindered by private traffic and the private traffic won't be hindered by the trucks and you can see they're already rebuilding back anyway so yeah that looks all pretty good to me um that should be on the up soon that looks fine there's no big platform of stuff like there was earlier that's looking good this is leveling up nicely and i suspect henley will start to grow fairly quickly soon anyway we've done quite a lot there uh, we've now got food coming into Princess. There you go, a little bit, a little bit come through, but, you know, it will build up over time. You can already see there's plenty of stuff that wants to go to uh, Princess, even more stuff that wants to go to Ailsham, actually. We need to put some more um, trucks on Ailsham food, so we'll do that, and we'll just double that. This Ailsham's growing quite well. But yeah, I think that completes it for this episode. We've done quite a bit today. I think in the next episode, I do want to pick up that concentration, uh, concentration? I don't know why I said that. 
I want to pick up the emission problem, right? Because there's been some discussion in chat about emissions. I know one guy called Levi, I think, mentioned as well about the buses on here saying, uh, your buses are doing like 50k and um, they're getting stuck behind some of the, sorry, the trucks are doing 60k and they're getting stuck behind the buses that are doing 50k. He's quite right. The problem is we don't really have a good upgrade solution because the next upgrade solution to that one, uh, the trucks can only go 60 so we can get a passenger bus that goes 70. So what we can do is Instead of having a 60 truck stuck behind a 50 bus, we can have a 70 bus stuck behind a 60 truck. <laughs> there's, there's not really a good solution to that. But thanks for pointing it out. We'll just have to leave it as it is. Um, but what we will do is we'll take a look at this next. We'll take a look at emissions and how it works in the game and how we might solve it to stop it from, um, for example, 40%. How might we stop the emission problem or reduce the emission problems so that we're not losing too many um, city citizens in our cities. That's it for me. Glad you're enjoying the series, guys. Give me a thumbs up and don't forget to tell your friends about it. Um, and I shall see you on the next video. Take care, guys. Happy transporting.